You're with Dion at HD Piano, and this is In Your Eyes by Peter Gabriel. One, two, three. Into the verse. And so that's then leading into the pre-chorus, which I just kind of started playing then. That's going to be in the next section at HD Piano. So we're just going to cover through here the intro and the verses of this epic, epic song. Oh, it's such a fun song to listen to, a really fun song to play. So I'm really excited to show you through all of the parts of this song, starting with the most simple part of the song, which is the intro and the verse. Now, these sections are pretty simple because you've got the same few chords rotating around and around and around with just a few differences in rhythm. So I'm going to show you through the chord shapes first. The first chord shape is a B minor. So in the left hand, we're really reinforcing how much of a B minor it is by playing two Bs, a low one and a high one, an octave apart. The right hand, we're playing the B minor triad or chord but we're playing it in second inversion. So B is actually in the middle of this chord. Underneath that B we have F sharp, and above that B we have D. Middle C is right there, by the way, so we are right in that middle area of the piano, and along with these low octave notes gives this really kind of soulful, serious kind of sound. So this is chord shape number one, our B minor in second inversion. The second chord shape is a D major chord shape. So in the right hand, we're going to keep the outside two notes, the F sharp and the D, and just change the middle one, the B, to an A. That's pretty simple. So the change from the B minor to the D is just one note difference. The left hand, to begin with, is actually going to play F sharps underneath this D major chord. So it's a D on F sharp. The third chord shape is a G major. Left hand comes to octave Gs. Right hand plays G major in root position. So we have G, B, and D. And then to finish things off, we're gonna to return to our D major shape, but this time the left hand is going to find Ds. So the left hand's gonna come up to Ds, and the right hand goes back to the D major chord from before, which is F sharp, A, and D. So there's four shapes again. We have the B minor, the D on F sharp, the G major, and then the D major. Now, as I cycle through these chords, take note of the movement, particularly in my right hand, as I traverse the different chord shapes. You might be thinking it's not moving much at all, but have a look at the vertical movement the back and forth movement as I play the chords that have a black key under my thumb and the G major which has the white key on my thumb. So I'm really moving and using the full length of the keys in order to keep myself comfortable for each chord. There is no point, you know, really stretching, trying to twist around to get into an awkward position just because you're used to playing only on the white keys. And likewise, if you're comfortable playing amongst the black keys and the valleys in between them, when it comes to playing a G major chord, you might find it really weird to kind of play that chord there. It feels a bit strange because, well, to begin with, the higher up the key you play, the harder it is because keys are like a, you know, a lever, like a seesaw. So if you can get to the outside of the keys with your thumb, 
a little easier to play. It just means that you're going to get used to moving backwards and forwards on the keys as you play either with your thumb on the F sharp or your thumb on the G. So there's my hot tip for you for today. Movement forwards and backwards is really essential to maintaining really easy chord shapes across this song. Now, so there are four chord shapes. Those four chords make up the first two thirds of this tutorial section. And the only thing that changes is the rhythm pattern. There's two different rhythm patterns that happen most of the time. The first rhythm pattern is we hit B minor on chord one, and then we hit the D on F sharp on beat three and. So counting out would be three and four and one and two and three and four. So it kind of jumps in a little ahead of where you might expect it. One more time, three and four and one and two and three and four. Back to G on one. G always hits on one, B minor always hits on one. It's the D chords that are the difficult ones. D for difficult, mm, hadn't thought about that. So the next chord, the D major, well, it usually hits on beat four. Sometimes though, it's gonna hit on the beat three and as well. But most of the time that last D major is on four. So I'm gonna play you through the first eight measures of the intro, which is the entire intro. And you'll have a listen to when it falls on the three and, and when it falls on the four. So here we go. As a note uh, here, it picks up the intro on beat four with octave Ds in the left and a single D in the right, landing on the B minor on beat one. So here we go. I'll count it out, pay attention. Is it on the three and or is it on the four? One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one, two, three and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. So, you might have noticed there was a couple of times where the D on F sharp hit on the three and. And there was one occasion there where, before the D chord, the left hand hit on the three and, but the right hand hit on the four. That only happens really once in the entire song. So if you miss that one and you hit it on the three and or on the four, well, I will forgive you for that because it doesn't really matter too much, but we are being accurate to the recording and that's what we hear so that's what we play that's a three and four so that is the intro i'm going to go through that again later at the end of the video and you'll just keep an eye on the falling blocks as to whether it looks like it's going to hit on the three end or the four for each chord so we're into the verse now the verse starts the same way as the intro so here's the first four measures for first four bars if you like of the verse two three four one two Three and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three and four. One, two, three and four. So we have two lots where the D on F sharp comes on a three end. The D hits on four, except for the second time where we have the left hand playing the higher of the two notes on the end and then landing on the lower note on the four. Here's that very last bar I just played. Two. Three, four, one, two, three, and four. All right, second four measures. Two, three, four, and one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So we have the D on F sharp always hitting on the three end. The first D is on four. The second D is on three end. So, a little bit of mixing up things there as well. Now, moving on to the last half of the verse. Things change here a little bit. Our chord shapes change. Our left hand doesn't change though. It's still B, F sharp, G, and D. But we're gonna change some inversions in the right hand. So we're gonna begin with our B minor playing in root position. So we have B, D, and F sharp. For the D on F sharp chord, 
we're going to do things a little differently here. We're going to play A, D and A. Not going to worry about having an F sharp in the right hand. So we've got this nice open chord voicing, which as you play it with that left hand F sharp, and that fills in the missing gap of that F sharp note. So we're going to have B major, sorry, B minor, root position, the D on F sharp with our open voicing of A, D, A, and then G major in first inversion. So now we have B, D, and G, and then D major in second inversion, so F sharp's at the top. So for most of these chords, it's either F sharp or G at the top, except for this one, which jumps up to the A. So there are four new versions or inversions of those four chord short, four chord shorps shapes. That was a weird shape of my mouth to make that word. All right, so in this last half of the verse, these higher chords match a higher melody. Peter Gabriel shifts upwards with his melody, and for rhythmic, for for rhythmic, for rhythm, these chords again B minor always on one, G always on one, but the D on F sharp is always on the three end, and the D is always always on the three end as well, always always. So here's four bars of this version: two, three. Four and one, two and three and four and one, two, three and four and one, two, three and four and one, two, three and four. As it goes through again, the first three measures are the same, but then we're going to land on G major in root position, hold it for three, and then we're going to play our D major on beat four. So in that last bar of the verse, we drop the G major back to root position and play the D major on beat four instead of beat three and. That is the only difference there. So after that, it'll head into the pre-chorus, which is where the fun really starts. So I'll we'll have a look at that in the next section. But to wrap things up here, I'm going to play through all that we've learned so far through the intro and through the full length of the verse. And we're going to go straight to full speed. Now, full speed in this song is 90 beats per minute, which isn't really any faster than I've been playing it through this whole time. So if you're feeling comfortable, here's full speed. One, two, three, four. into the verse now. Change the voicings. And that's that. Great job so far on learning through part one. If you're on HD Piano, just click on the next lesson to continue. And if you're on YouTube, head over to hdpiano.com for the rest of the song. Do you have a request? Well, visit requests.hdpiano.com and follow us on your favorite socials at HD Piano. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe and give us feedback in the comments. My name is Dion and you're at HD Piano, the home of the hybrid piano lesson.